In this webinar, we're going to overview all of the widgets available to your OASIS website editor. In future webinars, we will go into more detail on the various widgets, but in today's webinar, it's going to be a brief overview. So when you're logged into the website editor through your OASIS platform, on the left-hand side, you've got the main menu navigation of design, pages, widgets, content, personalized e-commerce blog, and some website settings. So for today, we're going to click on the widgets panel, and you'll see that's going to open up another dialog box where you're going to have an entire list of widgets that you can drag and drop onto your website on any page. So we're going to go over right here how you can search for widgets if there's something you're looking for specifically, you can type in a search feature here, or your most frequently used widgets will appear in this top section. We do also have them categorized so you'll see that we've got um, most popular including a text widget, image, an icon, click to call, map, image slider, photo gallery, button, an HTML code widget, a large title tag widget, and a contact form. Beyond that, we've got some other widgets that are also categorized, such as basics. And of course, some of these uh, are redundant in that we've already overviewed them. So we've got text and button, but also there are things like a divider or maybe a spacer or beyond a large title, maybe you want a smaller title section, maybe an uploaded file, a list, one column, two column, or three column, or four columns if you would like to work on some layout options. There's also a countdown timer, a table, the digital business card, an image timeline, a footnotes widget, a copyright widget, tabs, text and image, spotlight gallery widget, breadcrumb widget, accordion, and a water wheel gallery. And of course, as we continue to go down, they're then uh, broken down into other types of categories such as media. Under media, we have our image, an image slider, and a photo gallery, as well as icon, video, shape, before and after photos, searchable gallery, an audio clip, and Lottie animation. As we scroll down, then we can look at some business-related widgets such as click to call, map, open table, email, contact form, PayPal button, a restaurant menu, Yelp reviews, business hours, multiple location widget, coupon widget, online scheduling widget, Google Calendar, a Yext widget, and then we get into our social widgets, such as the share button, if you wanted them to be able to share this web page across their social media. You've got the Twitter feed, which pulls in a user's Twitter account information, a Facebook like button, Facebook comments, social icons, an RSS feed, uh, another comments uh, through another social network called Discus, Facebook feed, Zoom meeting widget, a WhatsApp widget, and the event listing widget. And then we have some advanced widgets such as the code widget with HTML as well as navigation links, and then some dedicated to things like blog. Right, so you have the all posts, recent posts, and searchable posts. I'll also let you know that if you do have a site with your e-commerce enabled, there are also some e-commerce widgets, which we'll get to in another demonstration when we talk about e-commerce specifically. So today we're going to briefly just go through a couple of these main ones and the most popular ones. So one that we'll use is the text widget. Uh, again, I have a blank page here, but this would work on any web page that you have. You'd be able to click the text drag and drop it onto the screen. Um, and the first thing we need to do is actually put a column in. So let's let's go ahead and put um, uh, two columns widget and insert a row. So now in this row, you'll see that there's an empty column. And when you have an empty column, that means that that is a place where you can add a widget. So we've got text widget and we're gonna drop it right into the empty column. So you can see here is this is a test of the text widget. And there it is. So now we've got a text widget. Now we can look at some other widgets, right? So if we go over here and let's take a look at the image widget, we can pull the image widget, drop that on the screen, and then opens up the dialog box and the widget here has pre-populated uh, the image folder. So you can choose something that's already in your library. There's also stock images, or you could always upload a new image from your computer. So in this case, let's go ahead and just add one of these pictures. And here it is. Um, you can also edit that image if you like. You can link that image. 
Um, you can use the tooltip or the caption when someone hovers over it. And again, all the widgets have the same layout with the content and the design. Design aspects really talk about the layout, the style, the animation, and spacing um, uh, for any of the, the widgets. So that is going to be streamlined across all widgets that we use today. Now let's go through and, and add some more widgets. Let's take a look at, well, let's add another container. Let's look at adding a three column widget in a new row. And you'll see that now we've got these here. I'm actually gonna move this up. All right, so now we've got these widgets here. Um, so we've laid out a new spot. Let's do a button. So let's take a button and we're gonna put it right into, oh, there it is. That's one column there for a button. Uh, we're gonna create a new button that actually says new button. Uh, we're gonna direct it to the uh, homepage or let's, uh, let's send it to the about me page. And then what we're gonna do is change the design of it. And we're going to make it a round button. Then what we're gonna do is change the button style. So we're gonna have the background color of the button be uh, this lighter blue. And then what we can do is we can change the button text on that. So the button text has a font color of a darker blue, which I think is great. Uh, we'll keep it as a bold format. We'll keep the alignment as uh, right in the middle of that button. And then what we wanna do is let's change the hover font color. So as someone hovers over the button, we can change that to just for display purposes, we'll say red. So you can see that hover font color is set to red. And now we can do uh, under the button style, we'll show you some advanced features of the button. So you can see the button um, has a blue border. It's got a light blue background. It has a dark blue text that says new button. If I hover over it, it actually turns red. What we're gonna do is change uh, under the more design options. I'm gonna click on that. And it's gonna say when they hover over the button, we're actually gonna transform that to, we'll just say black, right? So we'll do a black color. Um, so you can see just for illustration purposes, you've got a nice clear button. And as I hover over it, it's going to transform black background with red text. That's probably not a good color scheme for you, but it displays how that button uh, works. Now I will tell you that you can also move these um, in any section. So if you wanted to move this button, you could drag and drop it into a different section and it uh, remains there. I could also take it and put it up into a new row if I'd like. So um, there is some flexibility with moving widgets once you've got them placed, which makes it really nice. Now, another feature of the design is this little um, square allows me to resize any of the uh, widgets. Or if you use the um, white squares, you can actually drag that button in a certain location within that area. Okay, so you have a lot of functionality when it comes to design. All right, so now um, we're gonna just be on a different page here, the My Story, and let's add some more widgets. So we talked about the button widget, we did the image widget, we did a text widget. Well, let's say you wanna have a photo gallery. You take the photo gallery widget, right? And we're gonna drag and drop that into a row. And then we've got a couple different uh, things that we can do with a gallery widget. Um, the first thing is under the content, this is where you're adding the images. So you can create as many images that you want. It's gonna populate it with these four stock images and you're gonna simply delete them if you want or click the add image button. Um, you can also add uh, image by pressing that little button. But when I click on the image, it opens up the image dialog box so I can choose which image I want. And then I click done. And then once it's loaded in here, I have that image dialog box, which is gonna let me to either replace or edit the image. I can change the positioning of the image. I can give the image a title or a description. I can lay a button over um, uh, that image as well. So you've got a lot of features built into the image gallery. Now you see enable links on gallery images. So if I'm looking for people to be able to click on an image in the gallery and link off, I need to enable that um, and allow that, and it will highlight the set, uh, edit link button here. So in the gallery, I can do that. 
Now, we also have a unique feature here where you can actually connect your uh, website editor to your Instagram. Um, so it is only available for public Instagram accounts, but you can connect your Instagram and pull in content from your Instagram channel right into this editor so that you can use those um, pictures. Now, the photo gallery has a lot of different layout options. So under design, when I click on design, it shows you under layout some different options on how the gallery will appear. I like this one where it's kind of uh, not uniform in nature. You've got horizontal, you've got some that have shapes. So a teardrop, the square, the rounded corners, the round circle. So you can change those pictures and you can see it, it takes place immediately. So you can see what it looks like. Uh, we'll go back to the square for now. And then as you walk through this little wizard, it shows you that if you have a text or a button, where is that gonna show or appear on your actual gallery? And then of course you can arrange the button text, you can arrange the number of columns in your gallery, you can auto adjust it based on the number of uh, images that are in there. Um, and then you can set how many rows that you would like based on the images. So you've got a lot of functionality, very easy to just follow this little uh, image wizard, this gallery wizard through um, uh, this, this particular widget. So, and, and there it is, you've got your gallery. To edit it, you would simply just click on it and you can see that uh, these have obviously a title and a description. Um, and we can also enable a button just to show you how that behaves. So as I hover over this, you can see there's a, a text, a description and where it says, um, where it says button, we would wanna obviously change that so it fits all in the text, but it shows you that there's uh, some great functionality in the gallery widget. Now, instead of a gallery, some people might be looking for an image slider. So the image slider is just another type of gallery, but instead what happens um, is you have the same type of uh, editing capabilities, the same way to add content, add images, that's all universal. Um, you have the same design elements in terms of how do you want the slideshow to appear with some of the additional content. Um, do you want there to be a, a transition? Do you want it to fade? Do you want it to slide? Do you want it to autoplay or do you want it to click it? How fast do you want the slideshow to go? Do you want it to pause? Right. So there's a lot of neat uh, ways to uh, build out the slideshow uh, when you when you have this here. So the content, again, very, very easy to uh, update and upload, add images to your slider. So that's a slider image slider widget. We've got the gallery widget. We did talk about text, we talked about buttons and we talked about images. Uh, coming back over into the widgets, let's talk about another popular one. Um, let's roll down to, um, let's roll down to the social media. So if we come down here to social media, you're gonna find that uh, the social icons is a good one. So let's pull the social icons uh, into an area. And what you can do is you can select whatever icons you want to feature for yourself, right? And then um, each of those that you select then has you ask what is the information, right? So what is the email address? What is the WhatsApp number? What is the Facebook uh, URL? Right, what's the Instagram channel? What's the YouTube channel? Right, what's your LinkedIn profile? So you're just gonna fill this out and then it connects all of these to those channels. So very, um, very neat tool here that we have in this social icons widget. But now under design, let's talk about how it appears. Right now we've got the full color, but we have the option to do more of a grayscale. Maybe we want um, the square with rounded corners. Maybe we want just the grayscale um, icons without any circle or square. Maybe we want them in color. Maybe we want a little shadow. Maybe we want them as a, a black circle. Maybe just a black and white here. So it gives you many options on how you wanna display your social icons. And then of course you can also look at this, you can change the size of those icons. And you can also um, you know, increase the spacing between the icons uh, through the widget. Um, you can also, as you're hovering over them, do you want it to zoom out? So as I hover over, uh, you can see they kind of zoom in and out. They're changing a little bit. Maybe they float. So as you hover over it, it floats. Maybe it goes forward, right? Maybe it changes color. As you hover over, it grays it out. 
reverse grayscale is going to be where it starts out as gray, black, or white, and then as you hover, it changes color. Blur, right? Blur out. Blur and grayscale. Zoom out. Opacity. Right, so it just kind of shines a little bit or none. Um, animation options, again, are going to be universal through all of the widgets. Uh, entrance on scroll and how do you want it to animate? Maybe fade in, right? So it fades in. Um, how, how long is the duration? You can see that it took some time to fade in. You can also put, put a delay. You can also slide in, right? So you have lots of options. And the nice thing about these types of um, features is it makes it very interactive and dynamic and users tend to appreciate that because it shows that you've spent some time uh, and attention on the website rather than just being a really static website so the social icons is another popular widget if we come back down to social media um, when you come to plugging and playing different feeds like the twitter feed or facebook comments or the facebook feed as you drop that widget onto the page it's going to ask you what the URL is um, uh, for that uh, page that you're bringing in. Okay, um, you know what tabs do you want bringing in from your Facebook page? Um, another one might be the Twitter feed. So as we look at the Twitter feed, let's scroll down. We'll find Twitter feed. It's going to be the same thing. We're going to drag and drop that over here, and it's going to ask you for the Twitter username. And is it a profile, profile plus replies or favorites? Um, and that's gonna pull in all of that content. So um, we've kind of expanded these uh, columns here by adding content. So let me just show you that we can X those out. You can see that we've got a pre-formatted uh, Twitter feed here, just as an example. And we'll close out that column as well. Okay, uh, any other widgets that we're gonna go over in more detail will be on a subsequent webinar, um, but we will go over um, just another one here that I think will be important um, is, okay, how does the Zoom meeting work? So the Zoom meeting widget, um, when you bring that over, right, you have either a default meeting ID do you want them to request a meeting ID? Do you want a password, right, to request a password? What do you want the button to say, join meeting? While they're joining, what is the language here? And then what are the fields, name, email, um, that you want, right? So all of that is uh, available here. And course of the design is just the, the coloring and the font. But as you're over here, if you drag and drop this onto your page, what it allows someone to do is come to your website and join your Zoom. So you don't have to, you know, uh, worry about them going somewhere else you want to drive as much traffic to your website as possible so you can bring them to this page and they can enter and join your meeting right from your website so again we're going to be having many other widget webinars coming up here shortly all based on category but this is just a brief overview and how the widgets work hope you enjoyed it and looking forward to seeing what kind of widgets you get to play with on your website